What's up, mother people? Guess where I'm at today? I'm in a brand new location, a brand new home, a brand new dwelling place. Am I finally not homeless? You might be wondering, how do I get this new swag? This room is used a lot by many other people. Somebody left this here. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. This modern day girl from the waist up, she's dressed up, got makeup done, everything. And from the waist down, straight sweats. Now this is what the pandemic has given us because she could be on Zoom calls from the waist up. I like how you match my truck. Colorblind. You got black and green. <laughs> Hannah's Cantonese ass wanted me to go to her people. Lucky House Asian Cafe. Yeah, and also uh, she grew up in a Chinese neighborhood in England, so she misses home. And we're gonna get some Cantonese breakfast. We had to get the pineapple one. Hannah was like, let's try all the same stuff that we usually get at Delicious Food Corner. But this time, let's see and compare if it's worth it. Cause we're gonna most likely move to Vegas anyway. Beep, beep, beep. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, it's nice and melted in the middle. <laughs> I think this one wins. I think Lucky House wins. You know what though? They gave me this piece of condensed milk for the coffee. Ah, drizzle, bukake. Hey, I know what you're thinking. That's a nasty word. Actually, no. In Japanese, bukake just means to pour over, you nasty asses. You think that's gonna taste nice? Tastes good to me. Hannah picked out this one. Spam and egg. It's good, but delicious food corner is better. We always get this there too. I don't know, maybe my Cantonese friends can correct me on this, but isn't this a very breakfast thing to do is eat chow mein? Mmm, this is pretty good. Can't mess this one up. Last but not least, the chicken wing. Mmm, this one's really good. Presentation's better at Delicious Food Corner, but I think this chicken's pretty good. A lot of Cantonese places, they do fried chicken so, so, so good. That's pretty much our breakfast. Mm. Did you see? It's a fly on my shirt. Yeah, you saw one? Well, it was supposed to be a surprise, man. No, Do you want it? Is that a kid one? Is it a kid one? No. Okay. The surprise was ruined. I can see a peek of it. <laughs> I want to thank you for letting me stay here. No, this is not your house. <laughs> but you're letting me stay here. No. Yeah, we're roommates now. Well, I got two Spider-Man. Close your eyes. Are you ready? Okay, Taika, presenting. This is my rent. Do you know what rent is? <laughs> this That's is for you. This is for you. Say thank you, Diego. Give him a hug. Do you know what it is? What is a jacket? Do you want to put it on? No, it's a Yeah, you can put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. Another for you. Okay. Do you love it or do you hate it? Because if you hate it, we can throw it away. Oh, I can put it. I can put it away. I like it. <laughs> say thank you so much. You love it with all your heart and soul. I like, I like it. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. Is it a poncho because he's half Mexican, dude? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a poncho, dude. It's because you're Mexican. Do you know what a poncho is? It's for your people. <laughs> Because last time he said he was only Chinese and he's not Mexican. Good, so way to represent. Oh, Why is that so, so much? Ooh. Ooh. Roots! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know what roots are. See, now after a shower, Yeah. I think oh you could. Oh my god, that's, Ooh, that's so, so cool. cool. <laughs> oh my god, you look so freaking cool. <laughs> look at that. See? Go look in the mirror. Go look in the mirror. Have a six pack Where's the mirror? Where's the mirror? Do you like that? Yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. You don't want to keep it on? No. Do you love it? Yeah. Tell Theo thank you so much for thinking about me. Thank you. <laughs> oh, he did it with this without even being able to see. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Taste that. But this was a good one. That was good. Taste it. Really good. Taika's bringing us some snacks because he's being a great host, right? That was beautiful. Mm, better. That's good. These are more what better? Mm -hmm. What flavor is it? I don't oh. <laughs> Five I, second rule. I think it's Chinese. Oh, it's Chinese? I love 
The Japanese Kit Kats. Yes, this says um, you will one day meet someone with a peach complexion and this person will become your other half. Good times. <laughs> Tell Uncle Joe to marry me, Taika. <laughs> Everything we have in California, we have here in Las Vegas, it looks like. Hannah here is turning into quite the weeb. She's like, we need to go to Daiso. They have a Daiso down the street. If they got a Daiso, I must see so. This is a professional Japanese jack-off handle. This is a massage. Oh! <laughs> Does being in the store make you feel more Japanese? <laughs> Realistic dinosaur. Rare. Not gonna lie, going into that shop makes me miss Japan just a little, little bit. I know you've never been to Japan, but that's the closest taste you're gonna get to Japan. I have a question. This is truck confessions. We're gonna talk about the deep issues here deep issues. inside of the truck. This whole thing about cultural appropriation, right? Oh yeah. Isn't it gonna be weird? Well, it is weird because you're my girlfriend and you wanna embrace my world, but then when you go into places like Daiso and then you like, you're starting to like Asian, Japanese things specifically. And then like you were never a weeb, but then some people might assume you're a weeb because they're like, oh, if you're like an Asian guy, you must be a fucking weeb. I'm not your first and only Asian boyfriend. So maybe you have a little bit of weeb in you. But, but I like to make a comment though, real quick. What I've noticed is in the UK, there's way more interracial and mixed relationships where I've seen Indian guys with white girls and Asian girls with white, it's just like, yeah. it's just so many more diverse like groups of people. Yeah. And you have a multicultural family because yeah. you said you have Indian and also like Ghanaian, Ghanaian and African in, yeah. in your family too. It depends where you go. Yeah, if it, yeah, yeah. It's, a new, it's a newer phenomenon in the US where you see more interracial couples within the last, I want to say five to 10 years, mm -hmm. maybe even five years, it's been in, in the newer thing. How do you feel about that accusation and also like the whole cultural appropriation stuff? I'm still trying to work out what the boundary, because like I've obviously come, come I come here Sorry. to like get to know you and like whatever. You show me a lot of like Asian American things because that's your world, right? There's got to be a boundary somewhere of like being with you and embracing your culture mm -hmm. in terms of America and Japan, but also not going too far and crossing the line into appropriation. There's this whole genre. Uh, I think Belle Def Def Defini, Belle oh, Defini, yeah. she, Belle she Defini. the kawaii girl, where like yeah. they 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 look like anime characters, oh, yeah. and then they have extensive OnlyFans. Oh, just for that. And they dress a certain way, and then they do the ah like that, right? And then they even talk like this. And then they have the 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 ah the the face oh, like yeah. that the the ah hogal face. And then um, it's kind of hot. And is that appropriation? I don't know. It's like I a whole thing so. now. I mean, it probably is, but I but nobody in Japan acts that way. Only only uh, um anime yeah, girls. Yeah, it's like appropriating. It's like cosplay, right? Yeah, yeah, I've only seen it at anime conventions yeah. or Harajuku. I never see Japanese girls Actually act like that. that or walk around like it's that. It's probably like its own. It's its own thing. Right? It's its, its own, own thing, yeah. probably. If you dye your hair black, I assume <laughs> that there are certain things that I'm just gonna pick up. I obviously want to learn Japanese so I can communicate with your mum. There's probably gonna be things like the type of food you get used to, right? So when you cook, you cook a lot of Japanese food. So there's gonna be things I just pick up. That's just gonna be what's natural in the same way that I started saying hella because you say it all the time. And right? that's not even my culture. That's NorCal that bled well, into SoCal. It. Stop saying it. I hate it. it. I hate it. There's gonna be shit I pick up. Well, I don't know. I think it's a, this is a pretty extensive topic. And I remember people asked me, cause I used to go speak at universities and this one boy was like, how do you feel about appropriation and how like, you know, other cultures are copying us and whatever. Mm. And then they might even make it theirs. And I was like, you know, I had to think pretty hard about this because so it's not this the rules aren't the same for everybody I, it's not as objective as people think meaning like it's difficult to say like what i consider is appropriation and what yeah. i allow or think it's okay mm. m the next asian 
guy or girl might be like, no, that's not okay. Because I remember there was this whole controversy where uh, this one white girl had like a cute little Chinese dress on for prom. Yeah. And then this Filipino dude was like, you know, my culture is not your prom dress. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, it wasn't his culture. It was Chinese. But maybe he felt like as an Asian, yeah. he had to represent, right? Or maybe it's like it feels like costume. Maybe, yeah. yeah. And then the other thing was like, people dug into his Twitter and they're mm. like, he was saying the N word and he oh, himself yeah. was racist. So he was really just pointing fingers at all these people. And it, it's, it's yeah. very, it's very common right now in this, I think like Gen Z, like everybody wants to mm. cancel, point fingers. Oh yeah. So like, it's also you don't get the opportunity to fix it. So say like, I'm coming to a different country, right? So I think there's an expectation of a certain level of assimilation and making an effort to like, go with the flow and embrace the culture of the country that I'm in, right? America's a big-ass melting pot. I'm spending a lot of time with your group of friends that are predominantly Asian American. Mm -hmm. So there's a degree to which just I think there's an expectation that I should fit in, that I should make an effort to like get on board with the culture and go with it. And then there's a line that you cross where you take it too far and it's appropriation. Mm. But I think the, diff the where it goes wrong is like if I cross that line, I'm quite happy for somebody to say, oh, you've crossed the line and give me the opportunity to like say, my bad, mm -hmm. I can see what you're saying, won't happen again, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you I, or anyone else. Well, for me, I feel like I have a problem with Asians speaking on behalf of Asians. So like that person that corrects you, yeah. I might not believe that. So, oh. so, so I'm like, why do they get to be the ambassador of all of Asians mm. and tell them, tell you that you're doing something wrong when I'm like, I don't know, you know, but I get yeah. it. Like some things are blatant, right? Like, like some things are just like, they're just butcher Asian culture mm. without even asking Asian people or knowing any Asian people. And then mm. they do it like that's obvious. Yeah. But like um, everything is like circumstantial. So for example, there's a guy named Ivan Raman. And he's a Jewish dude who actually loves making ramen, right? Mm. And then some people will say like, you shouldn't make authentic ramen, you have no authority, whatever. Wow. But he's traveled to Japan. He's basically like been there for over a decade. Mm. He's won a lot of ramen competitions. He's opened up a restaurant in Japan. And in Japan, he got really um, famous. Yeah. So he opened up one in New York. Mm. And then so I'm like, okay, I'm a Japanese American, but I've never trained in making ramen. Mm. If I opened up a ramen shop right next to him, mm. who's considered more authentic? Me, because I'm Japanese and I opened up a ramen shop mm. or him, although ethnically he's not Japanese, but he did the studying, he did the mm. due di diligence and he's actually, you know, won awards in Japan. So which one of us is the more authentic one? And, and that's the kind of stuff that makes me go, shit, like I thought too deeply into this and it makes it confusing because you got to look at things case by case, not by this like blanket oh, state. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, I think because I'm on the outside, it's almost like if somebody tells me that I've done something wrong, but they have a good reason for it. Yeah. So if it's just that they just don't like me as a person and they don't want me being involved, that's different. But if it's like, oh no, you did this thing and there's a reason for it. They they have like a, like a reason in, even if it's not a blanket statement. So it's not that they're speaking for everybody, but this individual has said, you did this thing that offended me. Some people who are appreciating culture mm. get called out. And, and oh, I yeah. think that separates culture more. Okay, so for example, right? You know, I would say like some white girls are afraid to maybe wear kimono. And like, yeah. let's say if, if we get married, and we do a traditional Japanese wedding. Mm. And what if you're stuck with that dilemma of, fuck, should I wear a kimono? Cause I don't want to be persecuted, oh. you know? And then for me, I'm like, that's so fucked up because it's not even about that. It's like purging someone or accusing someone of, of appropriation and racism mm. and all that. When all they want to do is celebrate the culture of the person they love. I think in that instance, I would uh, mix it up. So say it was important to you or important to your mum, they you wanted like a traditional aspect of the wedding, mm -hmm. I would maybe do it for part of it. So like maybe for the reception, I wear the kimono and then for the actual ceremony, I wore something different. Like balance it out. Balance it out, but I think it depends, like especially with weddings is a specific thing too, because weddings are, are for the family, mm -hmm. I think. 
Personally, I believe engagements are for the couple. That's the way you're making a promise to each other. And then the wedding is the... legal and it's family. Yeah. So like in that instance, if your mom was like, look, I don't have a daughter. I've always wanted to go like kimono shopping for a wedding. Yeah. I'd be like, absolutely. Like as much as this, I feel like the wedding is for the family. So I would do it and I would take the hit if people were talking shit. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think in that case, that, yeah, if that's what your mom wanted. Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes people just see a picture mm. and then they get really mad. Yeah. Because it reminds them of like history. maybe yeah some because there is moments in history where mm. people did absolutely steal a culture, molest a yeah. culture, fuck it up. So British be, people did that. Yeah. So yeah. because of that, it makes total sense. Yeah. But I think everyone just needs to take a step back and be like, all right, what is this case, this specific yeah. case about? You know, but people don't know you. And so like if people are just scrolling through Pinterest, looking at like wedding ideas and they saw a picture, I don't blame anyone for being offended. Yeah. I don't think I've, I don't think I have some entitlement to where everybody should understand me as an individual, understand my particular situation, and if they're offended, it's like they're somehow doing something to me. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. I don't believe it's about me in that way. It's about a bigger picture. And I think that it was like obviously like if it was on your channel or something, people would know and they'd be like, I could say, yeah, Jay's mom really wants me to wear this. Yeah. If strangers got offended by it, I would more likely just apologize. Why? That's so British. Yeah, because it's like my American I, ass would be like, "Fuck you, shut the fuck up, you don't control know, me, bitch." But like, do you not think like it's not entitled, but it's like expecting everybody to understand you and your story? Because even if people knew the story, they might still not agree with it. Well, for me, it's like what gives them the right to throw stones at you? So like, if I don't know them, if it's something that's just a, an apology can like fix, because I don't know what's going on with that person. They so you're more like just diffuse it. That's your motto. Not diffuse. I think it's it's more like you don't know what's gone on with them. They don't know what's gone on with me. We're two complete strangers to each other, right? There's this thing in the middle where they've been hurt by something, mm. which is an involuntary reaction. They didn't choose to be that way. So instead of getting into it with somebody, sometimes it is just easier to be like, yeah. it wasn't intended in that way. My bad. You're very loving, nurturing and caring. Where if I go, you yeah. threw a pebble at me, I'm going to throw a boulder at you. <laughs> and that's how we're different, baby. <laughs> Anyways, guys, what do you guys think with this whole perspective of like cultural appropriation? Mm. When is it too far? Mm. When is it, you know, uh, when is it actually appreciation and not yeah. appropriation? I feel like it's very difficult to come up with an objective definition that everyone can clearly like yeah. stand by and see because it's, I think it's up to the individual to make up those terms or maybe the community, but maybe you guys can kind of like help me yeah. define it even better and see yeah. it even clear. Yeah, embrace the culture, learn it, but this is this is the line don't cross. Anyways, let's get some dinner. And I'm hungry. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese. Birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese.